Now we get to a new problem. They say, yes, well, God is good, right? You say, sure. So, but there's evil, right? Yes. Where did evil come from? What would you say? God is good. He loves good things. He's pure, actually. We know Allah is pure. Yes. So where is this evil coming from? And it happened after 9-11, when those buildings were blown up, and they uh, in, were blaming so many different people, and how did this happen? But then they took a rabbi from the Jewish and a Christian priest, Cassis, and then the journalist on the camera and with the microphone, he said to him, uh, tell us now, God is powerful, all powerful, all good, everything. And the uh, priest, he said, yes, yes, yes. And God is good, yes. But this is evil, right? Yes. So how did it happen? Did God do that? Did God let those buildings fall down like that and kill all those people? He said, no. God is love. He would never do that. So then what did the journalist say to him? Well, then who did it? He said, the devil did it. Well, this makes a new problem. You know why? Because now you're saying the devil has power. Does the devil have power? Can shaitan do something like this? No, not according to Islam. There's only one power, all with Allah. So where does evil come from? How could something so horrible happen if God is control? So then the man, he turned to the rabbi and he asked the rabbi, is that true what he said, that the devil did this? He said, no. The rabbi told him, there's only one God and he has all the power. He said, so what are you saying? God did this? He said, yes. But we're angry at God for what he did and you should be angry at God like we are. This was on television. That's what he said. What a doll mean. Go figure. Huh? <laughs> so what we learned already is in Islam there's only one God. So if you see anything happen, good, bad, or whatever, Allah is in control. Watch this. Where does evil come from? Who created evil? Say, I seek refuge with the Lord of daybreak from the evil that he created. Who created evil? Allah said he did it. Why? Because it's a test. This life is a test for all of us. If you read also, by the way, that happens to be the next to the last chapter of the Quran. If anybody wanted to check it out, it's surah number 113. But you can also look in chapter 2, surah Baqarah, verse 102. And you'll see that Allah sent down two angels. Harut and Marut to test the people with something else that's very evil called what? Magic. Sahir. Allah sent them to test the people. But it's Allah who did what? He created Adam and then he told Adam don't eat from the fruit. Adam and Eve were told don't eat from the fruit. Is it right? Is that right? But they ate from it. Now, if Allah didn't want them to eat from it, he wouldn't create it, right? So why did he put the fruit there? And why did he tell them don't eat? Because he's testing, always testing us. Not so that he'll know, because he already knows, but testing us so that we'll know and we'll understand. I'm going to wrap it up now. Believe it or not, I'm already at the end of the program. And except for that I have to give you this one little piece of information before I close. Our prophet, peace be upon him, let us know that the first things that Allah created from the very beginning is a heaven and a hell. And he created inhabitants for both places. And he could have just put them in their respective place. But the people in the hell would say, what? Why am I here? What did I do? And the people in the paradise would say, hey, I must be pretty good. Look where I am. So it's not like God. Each of us, each of us, Every one of us makes mistakes. But nobody deserves the paradise. But Allah has rahmah or mercy. He excuses some people and allows them to go to paradise. In fact, only the worst of all the mankind have to go to hell. The worst. Those are the ones who refuse the paradise. This is the teaching in Islam. 
Some people may question you and say, well, I, oh, wait a minute, I still don't get that. I don't, I don't understand that. Well, let them understand this. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created each person and then he gave them choices, not willpower. There's a difference. Because willpower means you could do something. If I have willpower, I will will myself to be a million, millionaire or billionaire. Let me be a billionaire. You know why? Because it's too much taxes now. So I need more. So I'll be a billionaire. How about that? Well, it didn't work. I just willed it and it didn't happen. Oops. How about I'll just will that I'll lose about 40 pounds? That'd make me feel pretty good right about now. Nope, that didn't happen either. Why? Because you don't have willpower, but you have choices. So it's Allah who has the will, and He can cause things to happen. But it's us, it's us who make choices. And are we going to be rated for what happens or for what we wanted to happen? Make sense? So everybody has what? Niyyah, intention, and will be asked. In the Ma'a Ma'ala bin Niyyah, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that all of us, we're going to be graded by our intentions. What do you want to happen? And that's what you'll be asked about, not what actually happened.